So, uh, welcome to this presentation where me and Johan will talk about ultra flexible automation of the future. So, uh, this presentation, uh, sorry, before we come into ultra flexible automation, uh, let's present ourselves. My name is Fredrik Ogre. I work in Scania. I've been there for like 20 years in production and I had the chance to be an industrial PhD student the last 10 years. And I'm now working as an automation competence leader, supplying uh, competence to the manufacturing factories all over the world of Scania. And uh, my name is Johan Frisk, I'm founder and CEO of Opotex. I have a background from ABB, Ericsson, and I have been an entrepreneur since many years. And we create uh, flexible mobile robots. I'm also an expert, expert advisor to OECD, EU Commission and the Swedish government regarding smart industry and the flexible automation. So, let's then do the introduction about flexibility and uh, I will talk some about Scania as well. Starting very broad, <laughs> what is flexible? So we have the definition is to be able to change according to the situation. So here is a potential situation where you like to have your right toe as high as possible, at the same time as having a hand and feet on the ground. Could be done like this. But from a company perspective, I think it's more increased from us here. We add the term necessary to be able to change according to the need uh, around us. And this term necessary is then set by the company vision or the strategic, uh, strategic from, from the company. So that, that is important to keep in mind that we, we set our uh, constraints ourselves in the company. From a Scania perspective, we say that we are the world leading provider of transport solutions. So that is kind of the strategy and vision of, for us. We build a tailored, customized solution to meet the customer demands. Uh, so every truck and bus we produce are unique and produced to meet the specific customer demands. And we talk more about the flexibility with the manufacturing system soon. And together with our partners and customers, we really focus on driving the shift towards a more sustainable transport system. Together to get more, yeah, a better future for all of us. But looking into the products, so far I've talked about transport solution, and this is the products that we produce to meet that vision today. Our main product is a truck. Uh, we have all these trucks on this picture, and they are all above 16 tons, so we work in the heavy vehicle segment. Buses is a big part as well, where we produce uh, buses from the small city buses up to the, the tourist coaches. And power solution, previously known as engine industrial marine, we sell specific engines for construction equipment, marine and power genesis as well. And on top of this we have the service business where we provide services for all our customers all over the world. And together with used vehicles we can provide a solution with high uptime even in, in older products. And the final slide on Scania and the flexibility is our modular system that some of you might know of. It's really the way to create these customized tailored solutions. So with that we have predefined interfaces between all different parts on the truck in this case, but this is also valid for buses and power solutions. So in this way we can have a flexible solution uh, meeting the demands from the customer while keeping it simpler to develop and produce. So just recently we developed a new, uh, more fuel efficient combustion engine and that can be installed in this system without doing any changes on the rest of the transmission of the cabs. So this is an important part for the whole company. Okay, so let's talk about automation trends. Flexibility is one of the key drivers for automation that we have seen for many years. And this was also highlighted from International Federation of Robotics 
in 2018. And this is due to the shift towards high mix low volume production also for large OMs. And also that this has also driven the, the need for regionalized production. And that has uh, been even more important after COVID. And to be able to do so, you need to automate and do it flexible. Uh, and this is also featured in the OECD report from uh, last summer, uh, uh, where OECD talks about the robots, the future of robotization, where also OpenSex is featured. Um, so, I mean, over the years, uh, more than 60 big webs and tier ones have contacted us, and uh, we have tried to summarize their needs and challenges. And the high mix and low volume drives uh, their overall need of flexibility. These are the challenges that big OEMs and care ones uh, see. And they want to have fast integration and setup. It should not take long weeks to set up a robot cell. It should be able to do it in, in days. And you should also have a high availability have become more important. But also, one challenge is that they would like to scale it gradually. They want to have, uh, be able to face a uh, fast ramp up and ramp down to adapt to new products and, and also volume variations. And therefore, they want to have flexible configurations in the robot cells and in the lines. So sometimes maybe four robots, the, the next day maybe three robots and a person, and uh, then maybe two robots or whatever. And they also want to have fast programming. They want to program themselves quickly. One of the more important things is to be able to change the workshop e uh, layout easily. And therefore, they want to have senseless safety. So they can easily uh, move equipment around. And in instead of having custom-made robot cells, they now want to go for future-proof and more standardized uh, robot cells. So let's now give you a personal reflection on the cycle development within automation and its effect on flexibility and productivity. So looking at the last century, we had uh, in the beginning of the century a lot of manual craftsmanship in our factories. This is a picture from Scania from the early 20th century producing a truck where we had high flexibility due to the human performances but compared to the future, low productivity. In the middle of the century, well, we got more and more automated machines, latest uh, mini machines, increasing productivity, but reducing the flexibility since these machines were produced in one part, and one part only. The next step in this picture was adding a robot to those kind of machines, so building robot uh, cells, producing with high productivity, but the same kind of low flexibility or even lower because now we don't have any human feeding the machine. The most development has been connecting those individual cells into machine lines and having bigger lines with even higher productivity, but the connectivity also enables us to design systems to meet a wider product range and the information exchange available in this can also make it possible to produce slightly higher uh, mix of product, thus the higher flexibility, and this simplified to often. We will come, this, come back to this one quite soon. But looking into how we work at Scania, and we will focus a lot on this presentation in the final assembly, that is a picture we see here in the background. So within the final assembly, we have relatively long product life cycles, so to say. Uh, often a product is produced for more than 10 years, historically, as far as But with the modular system, we do continuous improvement. As I just mentioned, we improve the engine, even though the truck looks the same. It doesn't really affect the final assembly in a major part. So that way, we have flexibility and innovation in the products but the life cycle as such is often long. 
a big need of flexibility in Fender assembly is that we have a mixed model assembly line. We produce all the truck you see on this picture on the same line. So that means, of course, that we need to have the flexibility to have all of that in one system. The buses are produced on a separate production line. So coming into flexibility demands in a bit more detail. We have this demand of a product, or I call it variant flexibility, since we are needed to produce all these on the same line. And uh, as I said previously, these are also customized and tailorized, so they are more unique. We also would like to reach a high volume flexibility. The recent developments, the last two years, see that the volume can really change rapidly due to things we cannot foresee. So we need our production system to be able to, wrap, to keep, keep, keep with as many of these volume changes as possible. So we need to design systems to be able to do this. And the last one here is on product innovation. Uh, so, we are in a the company, we like to keep that up and running, but then we need uh, also the production processes to enable those in, in, in order to products to be produced. That's also part of the flexibility needed. So, how flexible shall we be? It, it's really a difficult question uh, to answer. In one way, it depends on asset strategy addition previously, it depends on the products, the product design, it depends on the costs, the salary, and the inventory and stuff. Here we have just yes, two examples. The one for there is the most complex one where we, in the ideal world, have one production system producing all products. And up here we have the systems individually manufactured to produce a single variant. So this one has a lower flexibility, but offers higher productivity compared to that. As far at the moment, we are in the middle, or quite close to this one, because we produce all the trucks in the same line, but not the buses. And coming back to this picture, uh, on the future here, we see a need to continue incre increase productivity in our operations, but also increase flexibility. So I think of the future automation can enable both productivity and flexibility improvements. And I mean, now I talk about Sonia, but this is valid for all industry. So, the final slide here on the flexibility within Scania. We do require automation to increase both productivity and flexibility for the future. And the modular system we have should keep and that enable us to utilize and even improve the flexibility for the customers. Uh, in production we focus on variant and volume flexibility, those are the main things. And because of this, we are in a collaboration with you and OpenFlex, an auto research project where we try to find solutions to create these auto flexible production systems. Okay. Uh, so let me introduce uh, you to our uh, solution. So we are representing the third robot revolution. So we have a, a platform. We use standard ABB robots and the standard ABB robot controller. We have bundled that all into a mobile robot cell with all the IOs, all the safety, whatever you need. Uh, we have uh, the orange thing you see here on the floor. It's a docking station. That uh, secures uh, high precision or stability and easy docking. And this solution is patented, so we come in with high, high precision and stability. And that's enabled us to run these large robots at high performance, uh, full performance, uh, at high speed. For this, we won EU Commission's Big Innovation Award in all industries in 2015. Since then, we have created a sense of safety solution for large robots at high speed, which is patented. So we can run these large robots at uh, full speed. Uh, we have also created a dynamic robot program generator, uh, which also is, uh, the whole method is patented. Uh, so we can uh, generate robot programs all the way down to a serial size one. But I'll, I will explain a little bit more how the technology works in the coming slides. 
And of course, we use flexible grippers as well. And the robots are connected. Yeah, we have got uh, a bunch of other uh, awards over the years. Uh, and it looks like this. So it's a flexible mode flexible mobile robots, so you can easily share it, you are talking me easily. We run fully fanceless, also large parts. We have this dynamic program generator, we use flexible grippers, and we can also have dynamic gripper changes. We work with cheat pedal, we start there as it's very difficult, and we of course work with wood machining, which is fairly simple, but also we have pumps run now in food and beverage. And uh, by moving the robot, you can enable lights, free lights out production at the, the station you want for the night. Talking about the dynamic robot program generator. So what we have patented is actually to have two wizards. One wizard where we have taught the robot everything you need to know about uh, how we as a robot should interact with the machine or a, a station, a pallet, or whatever, uh, with all the logics, all the signaling, IOs, uh, or all the uh, error handling, and so on. And that is the most difficult thing. You combine these machines or stations to robot cells, as you wish. And then we have also full automatic path planning. So we uh, the robot understands exactly how we can move around automatically in the robot cell. You don't need to create any path at all. This is done once per robot cell uh, when you integrate and install it. And then it automatically creates a second listener. So here the, the uh, operator has full flexibility to uh, select the sequence. And, the event, uh, and uh, then just ask some simple questions. And then we use smart sensors and algorithms to identify the parts and uh, place them correctly into the machine. And then we generate a robot program automatically. So this, uh, you don't need to move a robot and set some points or whatever. Uh, we just generate this automatically. So it goes really fast from some minutes up to maybe 10 minutes for complicated cells. Uh, and we can go all the way down to serial size one, so it's no programming at all. So we can, uh, for some applications, we don't need to know at all what kind of product it is. We can sense the product and measure it and put it right into the machine. And uh, we are also uh, 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 having this uh, fancy safety solution that uh, fulfill all, all ISO regulations. And I would like to stress that we are, oops, we are coexisting. We are not a collaborative robot. So therefore, we are able to fulfill all ISO regulations. We monitor people, uh, robot, platform, grippers, and the parts of the grippers with PLD category 3. And also, the grippers are designed in a way so we will not lose a part even if we lose air or power. And uh, so if you come into the low speed zone, we slow down. If you go out, you go up to full speed again. And if you go into the stop zone, uh, we stop. And we always ensure that we always have a certain distance between robot and human at all times. Yes? Yeah, uh, it, it's, uh, yeah thanks for, for asking. We are using two laser scanners, which we have patented. Uh, how we use them. So each of them are looking 270 degrees uh, diagonal, uh, so we can see fully around the robot cells. We don't need any fences at all. And we can have also adaptive sensor locations, dynamic adaptations of zones, and, and uh, therefore optimized coexisting. We have also created a solution we call Pixop Solution. Uh, our robots are, are standardized hardware, the whole robot cell, and we create all the flexibility with software. So you can easily quick swap the robot for, for maintenance or repair, and you can use this bare robot uh, for second uh, two shift operations maybe, instead of having some robots standing still just in case if something happens. 
and uh, we have a solution so we can clone robot behaviors instead of having absolutely calibrated robots. This enables a new way of, of looking at things. We have also introduced something we call robot pools, so we can have robot as a service, and we can move the robot with a manually or with a, a AGV pallet forklift. And with robot pools, uh, which has been long big interest, we can maximize the, the uh, robot utilization and save the amount of robots with maybe 20 to 40 percent, depending application. Yes, so let's now focus on some potential Scania cases within this research project we talked about. So this first one, I have two, uh, will cover temporary quality inspection. Uh, we do not uh, approve any faulty products, our customers, so at times when there is a problem in the manufacturing process, we need to be 100% quality inspection of our products. And that is today done manually. You look at the product, you take a measure or whatever to ensure that you have the correct quality. And that is an ergonomically bad task. You have, you can have problem with quality and we cannot really automate it traditionally because it's only a temporary solution. We have it for one, two months before we solve the solution and then remove this. So here we think that the solution could be a thing to solve this. Okay, and the, in this particular case, uh, here you see a production line, and then we can, I mean, mobile robots are, are not a fixed asset, so you can quickly add a, a mobile robot if you have this uh, temporary inspection needed. Um, and uh, we can also have the temporary inspection as uh, yeah, stations outside the, the uh, production line. The second case connect to battery assembly. We are building a new factory, creating and building battery modules and packs to meet future sustainability demands. And here we have a big challenge in the future uh, volumes. How many battery trucks will we sell in the future, coming five years? It depends on many things, not to say the infrastructure to charge them as such. So we have to create the production system that meets the future forecast, but we sure would like that forecast to be as big as possible to, to uh, the system to be able to produce as wide a value as possible. And it's a similar question we look at product design. We have a design now, but how will the battery and battery packs look in the future? So we'd like to have a production system that could meet the future changes in both volume and product for this one. Okay, and also here then, uh, this is an example how we can have high flexibility line configurations for an assembly line, for instance. In this case, we have uh, seven robots, but uh, and it's all senseless at high speed and large robots. And then we can have other configurations in the same line. So sometimes more or less robots, or you can add humans in or out. But you can also, as you see in this uh, uh, case down to the right, we can also ramp up and down uh, by adding uh, robots and scheme. Um, and also, uh, we talk about ultra flexible automation of the future. And then there we can enable flexible and dynamic robot islands. So imagine that you have a lot of different islands that may have also different configurations. And then instead of having a line, you feed the, the material or the car or, or truck uh, on HVs between the li lines uh, or these islands that is needed for that particular product. And of course you can do it in a way. The advantage here is that we have complete flexibility. They are not linked in each to each other. They are senseless. They are product neutral, they are cycle time neutral, and they are flow neutral. And here uh, also are robot pools uh, come into play in a very, very good way. And also, of course, uh, we can have different configurations as you understand. Uh, as it stands, as you have nothing too difficult to move in and out, uh, and as I said, uh, by enabling robot pools, uh, you have a very, very high. Ultra 
So, to sum up our presentation here uh, and take some more questions, hopefully, uh, we see a number of big trends. The two most important for us for today is that we see the need to continue and increase flexibility and productivity through increased automation. And this should consider all sustainability prof aspects, uh, as mentioned here, people, planet, profit, all should be sustainable in the future world. And this flex solution enables this in different ways. Within mobility and the robot pools that we mentioned, we can have fewer robots meeting the current demands and then moving around these robots when they are required. So less resource more resource efficient on that one. Uh, simplified programming enables the operator to be more active in development and with more time programming and developing the system. And then fanceless installation open up the possibility to have the room defenses mean connecting the robot complex together and utilizing the, the floor space on the factory floor in a better way. So this is kind of the overall summary of our presentation today. Now we are happy to take some questions.